Machinists, continuing our live coverage of DMG Mori's 2024 Innovation Days right here in Chicago. And we're going to look at something really exciting here, one of my favorite things to see at the DMG Mori open houses. And to help us is my friend Alex. Alex. Hey Ian. Thank you very much for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks for coming. Now I was taking a peek at this earlier. This piece here may look fairly simple to the untrained eye, but there's a lot more to this than people may realize. Why don't you tell us about it? Absolutely, yeah, thanks. This is a draw bar that goes into our spindles for our milling machines, our milling spindles. Uh, and it's an interesting thing, because you know, a lot of times we talk to people about additive, and the goal is to solve a problem for them, right? And so this draw bar presented a problem for us in that we had 14 day lead time, multiple step process to make this draw bar. It would take the roughing the part out, it would take heat treating it, stress relieving it, finish turning, sending it back out to, to get chrome plated, coming back in, finish grinding. Nightmare. Big, huge 14 day process, right? So we were looking for ways to improve that process. And you know, who, who's better to do that than the DMG Mori, right? Right. Um, so we looked to our, our LaserTech 3000 uh, DED hybrid machine to find a way to remove all those steps in the process and shrink everything down into one simple setup, one machine to do the entire thing. So this entire thing now starts and is finished in one machine. Exactly, so we're able to take all those different steps and basically put them all into a single machine. So on this machine, we can load in a raw bar, we can turn it, we can finish machine it, we can then come in and, and coat high-speed steel directly onto the part in this machine in the same setup. Uh, we get up to 65 uh, HRC uh, hardness on this part Straight as deposited. Off the machine. No requirements for heat treat, stress relief, yes. anything like that. And then in the machine, we can also grind it. So we have a grinding package on this machine that allows us to do finished grinding immediately. So hold on, to go back, this machine will additive, yep. it will traditional subtractive, so milling heads, yep. turning, yep. and grinding. Exactly. Right there. So it's our fully functional NTX platform. Everyone knows and loves this NTX platform. It does all the things that NTX platform can do, but it also can do the additive side as well. It's insane to me. It's an entire factory in one one machine here. Exactly. Now, as you were saying, you can actually, is this the same material printed on the outside that it is on the inside here? Nope, so the, the base material here is a, a carbon steel, S45C steel, and then we're able to actually deposit M2 tool steel or M2 high speed steel on top of that. So, so we're able can, to achieve that higher hardness we're looking for and that wear resistance we're looking for by combining different materials where they're needed. Right, so you don't have to start with an entire thing of, uh, of tool steel. The other thing you can do is, I don't know if it, this application it makes sense, you can have a more flexible core with a coating that is much harder to make it stronger, less brittle, exactly. ultimately a better part. We can combine different material properties by only placing the materials that need those properties where they're needed. We can reduce costs by using inexpensive materials as a base and only adding expensive materials where they need to be. So there's a lot of flexibility in systems like this where combining different materials, which wasn't possible in the past, or no. took assemblies in the past, we can do on a single part. So parts that used to have to be pure ink canal, and every machinist loves ink canal, now it can just be a coating on the outside or you know, with yep. the rocket nozzles we've seen over there. They can be coated with the tough stuff that's very expensive instead yeah. of making the whole part out of it. Exactly. Do you mind if we take a look at this thing? Absolutely. So what are we running in here right now? This is actively running as we're talking. Yes, yeah, so this is a, a build-up operation. So we've seen on the draw bar, we can do coatings, take one material, place on top of another. Uh, we can also do big build-ups as well. So people think of 3D printing, right, as building a part up from scratch. And that's what we're doing on this machine as well. We're taking advantage of the large machine envelope to print a large uh, exhaust manifold part here. So this is pure Inconel 625, building up from scratch from a base plate. Uh, we can switch between machining and, and, and deposition as much as we want. Uh, very simple, just HSK 63 tool adapter for the laser head. That's it. We put it away, go in and pick up a milling tool, come back and it takes about a minute to swap between milling and, and, and deposition. And not only is that ink canal getting built up exactly where you need it, which is insane to start with, mm -hmm. if you actually look in there, that's four nozzles going into one. Yep. You could machine it, that would be a nightmare to machine from scratch. Machining that from scratch would be a pain in the butt. You're doing stuff <laughs> that, you, I mean, it's still feasible, but realistically not reasonable to do in this machine that would be it becomes easy in this machine and it wouldn't be somewhere else. Exactly. Wow, that's yep. absolutely insane. And that thing, if that's out there about this far right now, theoretically, how far out, you know, just judging by hands, could that part be if we wanted it to be? Yeah, we can get, um, with this configuration, we do have an extended bed length version of this machine available right. as well for longer parts. 
With this configuration, if we're depositing horizontally like this, we, we can get the laser head pretty close to the, the, the spindle there, but we're looking at a max length of eh, 30 inch rough, roughly, give or take. 30 inch. Give or take, you know. You're saying that like it's a small number. Yeah. That's not a small <laughs> number. And if we go back over here, you can see there's a lot of applications for this, you know, trying to develop impellers instead of starting from scratch. You know, look at this component here. How would you machine the inside of that? Like you're getting geometries that just aren't, and that wall thickness, I didn't even <laughs> notice that. Look at that, guys. Well, this was printed on our SLM technology, actually. So that's, a, that's printed on, on this SLM 12 machine right here. Let's take a peek at that yeah. while we're here. So this is a, if I am correct, let's see if I get my terminology right, mm -hmm. a powder bed machine? Powder bed fusion, correct. Powder bed and everyone's fusion. got different names for it. There's a bunch of different acronyms floating out there. Everyone calls it something different. The technology is essentially the same, right? We're putting a thin layer of powder down, we're melting it with a laser, and we're moving the powder bed down, repeating that process over and over again. So in instead of building up, essentially like a depositor, mm -hmm. this one is kind of building up in a different way. Yeah, we build it up by moving the work down. Right, that's, <laughs> physics is hard when we're talking about this kind of stuff. And the nice thing about these, you, I, you can't really see in there, but it's actually actively lasering. Yeah. If you have a build plate that's this big, you can have 30 parts on there if they're this big. Exactly. Or with this example over here that I was looking at, this I believe someone said is for dental crowns. Exactly. There's about 10 or 15 different implants all on the same build plate. Exactly. So and it's you, not you just one part. You can mix and match, you can do all the same part, you can do different parts, it really depends on your needs. You're a very flexible system here. And the really cool thing about this, guys, look at this. This is a spine implant, if I'm not Correct. mistaken. Correct, yep. It's... You can see it almost has the same kind of interior as a bone, so when this is implanted, I take it the bone can actually grow into it. Exactly. You're not gonna be able to get that spongy texture any other way. Yeah, that lattice structure is intentionally placed, to, as you said, to encourage bone growth and encourage the, the implant. And that, yeah, you can't really machine that. So that's no. something that you can do with this technology. You can't do a traditional technology. It's just really revolutionizing things. And again, medical industry, yep. that's the same thing. I believe this is a hip cap. Hip, yep, part of a hip implant, exactly. Same kind of thing there where that's designed to make it better for the patient at the end of the day. Exactly. So not only is the technology good, it's actually helping people's lives every exactly. day. And of course, I can't talk additive without bringing up this <laughs> giant monster. What are we looking at here? So this is our Laser Tech 125 DED hybrid machine. Uh, so this is the, the kind of the cousin of the LT3000 we saw a moment ago. So where that machine's based on our, our NTX platform, our Milturn platform, this is based on our DMU monoblock platform. Right. So tried and true German five axis milling machine. Beautiful five axis milling yeah, machine. Yeah, very, very well established machine in the industry. And again, just like we're doing with the 3000, we're taking that base machine, taking everything that base machine can do, and then in the factory, once that base machine's done, we're adding the additive technology. So it's all designed yeah. by us in-house, integrated by us in-house. Uh, so we control the entire process from, from design to final, uh, final assembly and shipment. What is the largest part you can put on this thing? Because I don't know if you guys can get the scale of how enormous this is. This machine's giant, has a table about this big. Yeah. What are we talking? Yeah, the parts get pretty big. So this the, the 125 has a 1.25 meter diameter table. Wow. Uh, so it's pretty big parts you can fit on yeah, here. Seriously, yeah. seriously. I don't know if you guys can see in there, it's actively printing right now. Hard to see, these all have a film on them to protect your eyes, obviously. Yeah, laser safety glass, yep. And the same thing as in that other machine, as Alex said, this has a full tool changer full of traditional tools. Yep. So if you want, you could build up a bit, mill it down to precision, build up a bit. Yep. So you can have very precise internal cavities. Yep. You can have channels going through it. It's absolutely crazy. Exactly. <coughs> now here's just, I have to show this, because this is insane. Look at this here. What are we looking at? <laughs> So that is a uh, uh, a a nozzle. It's, it's a demo nozzle, but it's a nozzle of a of a, a part that we wanted to you know do a section of this. So you can see all the internal workings, all the internal features that you can print in a powder bed uh, machine that you couldn't traditionally machine any other way. No, absolutely not. I mean, that's almost organic the way it's built in there. Yeah. And you know, some of the chambers and stuff in there, you can really create parts. You almost have to change your thinking yep. on creating parts because things that weren't possible before you can do any day now exactly and that's that's one thing we we talk to customers a lot about is they they bring us a widget and they say hey we've made this widget on a cnc machine can you print it we say we can but maybe we shouldn't maybe we think about different ways to design that or maybe we think about 
different ways to enhance that part with this new technology to make it worth printing, right? So you that's can a conversation it, we have all the time with customers. Make it strong where it needs to be. You can make it hollow where it doesn't. Yep. Reduce weight, increase strength. Yep, exactly. It's such a technology that I feel like a lot of people feel is still very much in its infancy. Mm -hmm. And in some ways it is in terms of people bringing it onto their floors and applying it. Yep. But it's a very proven method of manufacture that more people yeah. I think should be looking There's at. There's a lot of people who haven't been experienced, you know, don't have experienced this yet, and they're a little bit maybe hesitant to dive into it. But we can say for sure, it's out there now, it's being used widely. It's a very proven process at this point. And so we're, you know, would love to have more opportunities to talk to customers who maybe are wondering how to get into it to, to help them on that journey. Absolutely. Now, yeah. I got to steal you two more times here. Yeah, yeah, no worries. This over here, I've yeah. seen versions of this. At Emo, we saw this version here. That's yeah. a, obviously a bimetallic, what is it, Inconel and Yeah, so something. we have a, a copper alloy on the inside and Inconel on the outside. So again, we're able to deposit both materials uh, by having a multi-powder, uh, multi-hopper powder uh, set up in our machines, our DD machines. We can switch materials on the fly, controlled by the NC program. We can gradient materials together, controlled by the NC program. Right, so you don't even need to go Inconel copper. You could actually, if you wanted to, make it gradient out exactly. to really, you know, it's they're now part of the same material. Layer by layer, we can change the mix, right? So I can start at zero and 100, and I can go 10, 90, 80, 20, and I can gradually vary that by layer to help combine dissimilar materials or help achieve certain properties that I'm looking for in the end product. Right, stuff that you may not be able to buy off the shelf as yep. a solid. I mean, look at this piece yep. here. This has been clearly milled drilled everything you want on it, yep. that is as solid as could be. Yeah, that's an example of a test specimen. Just so when we're doing these kinds of blends, we, we pull tensile bars, right? We want to check to make sure that we're failing where it's supposed to fail, not where it's not supposed to fail, right? So when we're pulling this, you know, the Inconel shouldn't fail, the interface shouldn't fail, the coppers should fail first. Right. So we're pulling these bars to verify that we have a good interface between the two materials by seeing the copper fail first. And so that's something we see we see with this. And I take it you guys have done that quite a few yeah, times. Here's an example sure. of the copper failing right there. <laughs> it didn't snap here, which would be the bad thing. Exactly. So, so we're showing that we have a good interface, a good, good metallic bond between those two materials. And what are we looking at here? This is another fun demo we did, uh, inspired by customer projects in the in the space industry. This is not a real customer project, but inspired by. Um, we don't want to show proprietary information of off. Course. But, this is a fun part because what we did, if you kind of maybe come around the back real quick, is we started, my reckon this is a base plate for an SLM machine, right? Yeah. So we started by putting a, you know, base plate in the SLM machine, printing up this copper nozzle in SLM first, which has these internal cooling channels, which we exposed Ooh. here just to show off. And then we, we took the entire base plate out, loaded it into the DED hybrid machine. The big one. The big one. And then we cladded the outside of the copper with Inconel and then continued to build up a large bell of Inconel this is from there. Nuts. Yeah, so well, it's, a, it's a fun one. It was a fun one. What was the rough on. print? Oh, it says right here. Yep. That was only 66 and a half hours. Yep, for you doing the whole me. thing. Yep, I exactly. would say three weeks. Yeah. Yep. Now, I got to ask you about this machine over here, and I don't know if I'm supposed to, yep. but it's a big LaserTech 30 SLM that says prototype on it. Yes. What are we looking at here? So, this is a machine we're really, really excited about. So. This is one of our early prototypes, but it's a machine that we're starting to develop in what we have developed now and we're building now in our Davis, California factory. Right. So it's the, the LaserTech 30 SLM US machine. Um, so this machine is, is fully designed and assembled and built in Davis, California. It's American made. Uh, so it qualifies under the, the BAA Buy America Act as, a, as an American product. Which is very important for a lot of these big companies who are putting this in. Exactly. Big companies, uh, government, you know, research facilities, other government entities. A lot of people are very, very excited about having this, this, uh, this Buy America uh, compliant machine. And we're excited because it's another machine getting made in America. It's exactly. fantastic. And beyond just that aspect, which is really cool, there's also some really interesting technology in this machine as well. Um, so starting with a laser that's also made in the U.S. Uh, and by Enlight, a company called Enlight, uh, we have a, it's what's called a ring mode laser. So it's a laser that can change spot sizes on the fly. Uh, huh? So it can have a very small 80 micron diameter spot for Four. doing detailed work. And then it can go to a larger ring mode, a 240 uh, micron uh, ring mode laser uh, that can do big work. So. Think of it from like the analogy like they use for the for the machine tool industry is you know I have big roughing tools to hog away material to do work really fast really efficiently right so we can do that for big infill areas with our big right. ring mode laser 
And then when it gets down to finishing small details, I get the small laser to come in and just do that detail work. That's crazy. So, so it allows us to basically take a, a, a single laser machine, but really increase the productivity of it. So that single laser machine allows us to keep the machine simpler, keep price of the machine down. So it's a really great machine for people who might be getting into added for the first time and are looking to lower that barrier to entry from a, a, a capital investment perspective. Sure. But it's also going to keep that productivity high. So we're looking at this machine as basically having the lowest cost per part of any machine out there right now. So I can believe it too, because when you say, you know, you can basically rough out those big areas, yep. that says production to me. Exactly. That means you're only spending time where you need it. Besides that, it's just slapping material yep. on, still in a good way, yep. but you know, you're not using, like you say, a 1 8 M mill to try to hog out a block this big. If exactly. You this is a production ready machine not just for traditional additive users, and they were very excited about it as well, of course. but also for those users who maybe have been looking to get into additive and are looking at the right time to make that, make that jump. And if people want to find out about, more about this machine and all of these machines, where can they go? They can come to our website. Yeah. And of course, these will be here at the pre-IMTS, I believe it's Technology Days, in September. That's a good point. So we have a couple of really, really cool events coming up. So in a couple of weeks, we'll be at Rapid TCT. Oh, nice. This machine will be at Rapid TCT on our booth. The LT12 will be at Rapid TCT on our booth as well, coming up uh, end of June in, uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, that's a big additive show. Huge. Yep. And then we'll also have a, another technology days here in Chicago coming up in the, in the fall. So. so if you're already coming to IMTS, I believe they're opening this up even a day or two before. Yep. Make sure you stop by. You're not going to want to miss it. Yep. Alex, thank you very much for your time. Absolutely. Really appreciate it.